Hello, how are you? Welcome to my uh, behind the scenes work on a video that I hope to have uh, out soon. I'm actually just uh, passing a bit of time today. There's not much happening around our house, so it's Saturday, so I'm just uh, semi bored. So I thought I'd uh, drag you along. You can see what I'm doing. Ask me some questions if you want. Go right ahead. Feel free to do whatever the heck you like. So, what am I doing? Let's head over to Premiere, Adobe Premiere. I've just been um, putting together the first bits and pieces of a um, video about which was inspired by an article in New Scientist uh, I read a, couple, a week or two ago that an antique fridge could keep Venus rather cool and that uh, obviously got me intrigued so I decided to read and it was kind of yeah it's interesting that's a very very old design refrigeration uh, it's a refrigerator uh, not designed as, an, as a refrigerator, but um, it has applications in refrigeration, but this thing could keep a uh, Venus Rover running for about, well, up to 90 days, so it's pretty, pretty good. That's quite a bit. I mean, uh, uh, the last uh, piece of tech that visited the Venetian surface, one of the Venera probes from Russia, um, they last around two hours on a good day, so yeah, before the crushing pressure and and apocalyptic heat um, knocked them out. So this thing, if it can uh, explore the surface for even, yeah, a few months, that's we can learn a lot about Venus, so that's, that's pretty awesome. I've been banging on a lot about Venus lately. Um, Mars seems to get all the love, so I think uh, it's time that uh, Venus got a bit of attention. So what am I doing? I'm just uh, making a video about that. Um, this is my standard intro thingy. And yeah, so anyway, just um, I want to delve into the uh, the life a little bit of uh, Reverend Robert Sterling, this gentleman here. Let's see if I can zoom in on him a bit. I can. Uh, uh, Scottish clergyman uh, who uh, went to the Scottish lowlands in the eighteen. Uh, 40s, I believe this was invented. I'm probably wrong. I don't deny I've been wrong plenty of times. Um, but yeah, there he is. There's a lovely uh, rendition, rendering of the uh, his countryside behind him. And yeah, so there's uh, some uh, transformed uh, pictures of the Venus surface, Scotland, and there's some gifts. Some just throwing this all stuff all together at the moment. And there's a little uh, cartoon I did of the possible rover design. I did this uh, sketch in Autodesk sketchbook um, with a little bit of help from the original picture I traced over it and then realized that it looks pretty good like that. So yeah I like the whole sketchy look it's kind of it's kind of neato, neato you beaut. I'm just not sure what to do with this rover at the moment. Uh, sort of just have it trundling across the surface like that, and it's a rough animation. I don't know animation at all. I, I want to learn animation, but it's just... This is a very one-man band thing for me, this whole YouTube channel. And um, there's only so many things I can try and teach myself. I'll be messing around with... Um, sketchbook. I've got myself a little, uh, you know, a proper little tablet. There's my pen there. And there's um, a sketch I was working on there. Another bit of pencil I was doing. Let's see what we've got. Open recent sketches. What have we got? Uh, must be down here somewhere. You know, I can do a lot with a sketchbook, but it's sort of limited, but it's good for what I want to do right now. I'm uh, not uh, particularly great at anything I do, so there's a sketch I did of Robert Sterling, which is going to fit uh, feature in the video somewhere. So, what do you think? It's just uh, this pen's pretty handy. I've, uh, I'm really liking it. So it's a Wacom Intuos Pro um, medium size tablet. It's really awesome. I love it. Uh, and I think these uh, cartoons are a, a nice little touch in a video about a, a high tech exploration of another planet. I reckon uh, uh, this organic, sketchy look. Um, I know. I, I like it. It's working for me. I was finding with these videos of mine because my channel is so small and it's basically got no subscribership or viewership so I can, I'm kind of free to do whatever I want and I like to just ex experiment with new things. 
how's it going? So in this video I'm going to um, try some animation. I've seen some cool videos lately uh, featuring animation. There's one of CPG by CPG Grey. I saw a few days ago about um, a dragon um, and humanity's quest to destroy this dragon. It was really cool. I thought, man, that's awesome. Uh, so I like to learn animation myself down the track, but uh, right now I've got to do things real rudimentary style. But uh, yeah, what do you do? So yes, this is. Robert Sterling. Very clever man. Uh, a clergyman his whole life, but he had a bit of a knack for engineering, so yeah, smart, smart guy. Let's get rid of a lot of stuff there. We know that writing, it looks horrible. Just right, so minimize that. But yeah, back to the video. I'm gonna squeeze old Robert. Let's just whoop. Don't do that. Premiere Pro has this really annoying way of changing its layout. When it, oh, well, at least I need to MIDI browser. Oh my god. Woo, thought I lost it all. And then I can't um, reset the layout. Um, so I've got some more pictures of the lovely Scottish countryside here. I've transformed them uh, using paint on there into like an oil painting sort of thing to suit the ye oldie worldy feel. And I'm gonna have some cool pictures of Venus, of course. That's, whoops. So, you know. I apologize to the respective owners of these pictures. Oh, but they're so great that they, they're worth sharing. And um, I've been messing around a lot with the sketching of things, so I've got this, I'll put this one here. A Scottish Cottage. I thought would make a, neato, a pretty neato new beauty addition to the video. Basically, I just grab a photo and I change the opacity a little bit and create some layers in um, sketchbook, and then I trace over it, and then I touch up the original the trace, and I do things to it in Paint.net. I get rid of the background and stuff, and have this nice clean picture of a cottage to help me tell my story. And uh, it looks right. I don't know. I'm happy with that. I like the, I like the cartoony organic look. Um, oh, it looks good. That's what I think, so um, that's what I'm doing at this point in time, working on a video. I'm working on a script as well, a script sort of happening, I can read it out to you if you like, actually I think I will. Uh, where are we? Where is we? Whoop, Evernote. I use Evernote for this sort of stuff because uh, I've been using it for years, it's a real great cloud based storage kind of uh, uh, application. I used to do a lot of um, writing. I was trying to write scripts and things for comic books and stuff, and those things fell by the wayside. The scripts, but the scripts still there in Evernote. I may drag them off and drag them out and dust them off one day, but uh, yeah, who knows? There's only so many hours in a day. So, yeah, I'm working on those sketches. Let's close that up. Get rid of you. Uh, another cool article. I might look into Venus itself in this video. I just found this awesome article. It's a little bit old now. I, I haven't seen too much else on this topic, but the metallic snows of Venus, man, that sounds pretty, pretty awesome. Can we zoom? Can. Right, metallic snows of Venus. Lovely Venusian landscape there. Got some uh, Magellan radar images. But uh, yeah, Venus has metal snow high mountains, somewhere 11 kilometers uh, in height. It's uh, th two or three kilometers taller than Mount Everest. And they're capped with snow, but in this case, the snow is made of heavy metallic minerals such as lead sulfide and bismuth sulfide. That's yeesh, crazy. Heavy metal snow. Wow, that's uh, pretty crazy. Uh, it's got the uh, Venusian uh, equivalent of vapor or mist. Um, I guess it does the same thing that water will do on Earth as these uh, metals melt at the surface because it's so gosh darn hot down there, hot enough to melt lead. Uh, they drift in the atmosphere, as water does here, and they then condense higher up as things cool a little bit. I'll say a little bit. Um, so, yes, it's actual snow of metal. But uh, there are also other points up, other, other regions in the atmosphere where it's hot, cold enough that, actually cold, as in cold, cold, that carbon dioxide becomes snow. So, this planet, which is the hottest place in the solar system, also has um, 
regions are freezing cold. Well, I didn't actually know that, so that's going to feature in the video. And I might have my little, my little, where are you? Whoop, there you are. My little rover. Come on. My little rover just exploring Venus and um, seeing the sights. I like Venus from a standpoint of exploration. Um, whereas, whereas everyone else is banging on about Mars at the moment, I um, I think Venus is worth checking out too. Um, it's possibly a better candidate for colonisation than Mars. From technically more feasible from some points of view. Um, possibly the only criteria right now is that we don't uh, make it to the surface. It's obviously too dangerous or too inhospitable for any kind of long-term presence on the surface. But up in the clouds is a different story. Um, quite habitable up there. Um, you, just, you need to wear an oxygen mask, but uh, the pressure and the gravity and the temperature is actually very Earth-like up there. So um, if we were to inhabit dirigible or airship type platforms or, or airships, um, just imagine a great big Hindenburg floating around in the Venusian cloud tops, inflatable vessels. Um, I don't know, it's manageable. Seems, seems pretty awesome to me. I, I like that. And Venus, I reckon was once a candidate for uh, life. Or may have had conditions suitable for life uh, a couple of billion years ago, but for whatever reason, or for a couple of reasons, Venus became the apocalyptic freaking hellhole that it is today. It's the same size as Earth and has uh, pretty much equivalent gravity uh, and a similar composition, it's believed, chemically. Um, but um, yeah, it just had one bad day and that was it. Venus became what it is today and Earth became what it is now. There's my little rover. I do like that picture, I've got to say, that little cartoony sort of look. I might do some more of these pictures of uh, various spacecraft because anyone can um, cut and paste a photograph of a spacecraft from the NASA's website or whatever, but you know, cartoon, you don't see too many cartoons these days. And yeah, I like cartoons. So yeah. So that's the video as it stands. Intro is always there, it's pre made. Mr. Robert Sterling himself. Venus, Venus, Scotland. I'm going to compare the highlands of Scotland to the highlands of Venus. I'm going to do, you know, Venus is a hard place, so it's only appropriate that um, technology from a hard place like Scotland, that's his little motor there. Whoop, where are we? There we go. I can't zoom in at the moment. Can I? Yes, I can. Can we play it? Yeah, it's only a, a GIF, so I've got to do something with that. That's it there. Um, I don't know how it works, I'm not an engineer, but all I know is that this thing is um, a prime candidate for refrigerating the electrical components of a rover on Mars, enabling it to survive for longer than a couple of hours, which is really a big deal. So that's a very big deal. Imagine one of these little suckers just buzzing around, exploring Venus. That'd be, that'd be great. I want to see that. I hope to see that. Fingers crossed. Ah, uh, oh, break those fingers. <laughs> anyway, that's all I'm going to throw up today, so to speak. Speaking of throw up, there's a lot happening here. Bottle of noodles. My desk is getting super crowded. I've got the phone there and the noodles there. The laptop right in front of me. This microphone here. My tablet for drawing on right there. The pen. Where is it? Ooh, don't lose that. Lose that. You're in trouble. With my wife and mouse pad and all kinds of other junk. So yeah, it's uh, it's a work in progress. Hope you've enjoyed listening to me rave on about my upcoming project and throwing a little bit about Venus. Um, it's been good fun. I'll see you guys very soon with a complete video. I might do another video like this, uh, hell, soon, maybe later on today if I'm bored enough. But um, thank you for subscribing to my channel if you do. I love you all. Um, thank you for enjoying it if you do. Thank you for the comments if you put them up. Um, it's a big deal to me. The channels, I want to make this work just not just for me, but just for you guys. I like talking about this stuff and sharing science, and I'm a, it's a really big deal to me. It's been a big deal for me my whole life. So 
you know, um, I love it when people say something positive about these videos. I the little the little videos I put up on my Facebook group. I have a Facebook group uh, which has got 420 odd members, but I focus on astrobiology and astronomy type topics. Uh, people are liking the, these little videos I put up every few days or so. Only about a minute, but they just maybe like little chunks of information. Throwing an idea out there that gets people sort of going, hmm, that's pretty cool. That's that's generally how that's how it worked for me when I was a little fella. You know, it's, it's on a lot of those, oh that's pretty cool, mate. And you just get curious and you just want to explore further. So yeah. In my videos today they're I guess they're a bit rough. I mean like I said, I'm a one man band, that's all I am. I have zero budget. I spend whatever few cents I have spare on this doing this stuff. You know. It's not for, you know, hardcore scientists, it's for people who don't know much about your stuff, but uh, may, you know, could be nudged towards it, you know, uh, like, like I was. And I've done science at university, but I haven't worked in it. It's just life got too complicated, long story, I'm not gonna, never gonna go into it, but it just didn't happen for me, so this is what I do, you know. And um, there are plenty of guys like me and girls like me, you know, my age, who are doing other things, but, you know, you just sit there and think, hmm, I wonder what could have been, you know. Um, and you know, please, please enjoy this, this stuff. You know, this is it's just fun to talk about, fun to share. It's uh, it's it's a sense of community in talking about science or anything that you like with other people who like the same thing, whether it be you know Star Wars or Star Trek or science or astrobiology or exoplanets or anything, you know. Um, this is this is my jam. This is what I like doing. So I'm gonna keep doing it. I get a bit sick of it sometimes. I get pretty fed up with it sometimes. I just think, well, no one's watching. No one cares. But you know, well, I will stuff them. No one watches. Well, I'll do it for myself. My own enjoyment. And I know it's getting through through to a few people. So that's that's that's, that's big to me. That's a big deal. So yeah, I just you know I like to crawl the net and you know work in my group. Which is here. Let's, find, let's check out my group. See what it's doing. And the internet decides to wake up. Where are we? It's called. All right. I've got a page, but the group's where I spend most of my time. All right. The computer's slightly slow at the moment. I apologise. There it is. It's called Astro Biological. Go on, computer. Load up. That's it. It's the universe in plain human. Cover banner there, and uh, yeah, just um, I do these long audio chats from time to time. I've done a few of those. I like to curate interesting posts relating to this stuff. Um, yeah, just get people into it. You know, I, I make these little videos. They were on a daily basis, but I'm doing probably three or four a week if I if I can. It's all uh, very time consuming doing this. These are pretty easy to make. I do these on my phone, believe it or not, but uh, they still take, take time to make. But uh, people, you know, getting into it. Aaron Freeman, love your, love your work. He has a, an Excitable Ape YouTube channel. That's the name, The Excitable Ape. Uh, check him out. The Excitable Ape, as written as it's spelled, still as it sounds. So, yeah. Um, I'm meeting people who are into this stuff as well. Some scientists, some non-scientists, and it's uh, been a lot of fun. So check out the group if you uh, feel so inclined as well. That's uh, me there pondering life, the universe, and everything with some uh, astrobiologists of ye olde times, uh, Spanto Aronius. I'm going to do a video on him. He's a Swedish chemist who talked about panspermia. Nicholas Tacosa, um, Nicholas Copernicus. Giordano Bruno, these guys had some pretty far-reaching ideas on our place in the universe and life, whether it may or not exist in other worlds. And uh, my video was pretty well saved on them, the history of astrobiology. I'm not plugging the channel. I'm not fresh with that. I'm not one of those, I don't know how to plug it. I just, you know, it's been two years and it hasn't really exploded. So I decided, well, you know, stuff it. It's just a uh, thing I do for fun. And if it takes off, it takes off. If it doesn't, well, you know, I'm glad someone likes it. So I'm going to stop raving on now. Goodbye from Astrobiology for the Universe and Plant Human. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from this video for now. And I will reach out and 
talk to you guys sometime soon. So, go back to the OBS end screen. See you later. Thank you again. And I'll, yeah, once again, I'm just repeating myself now. Bye.